Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to study the continuation of the chapter The Sniper written by Liam of Lahati. So without wasting much time, I'll move into the content. But before that, if you haven't watched the first part, please do go and watch it. I have put the link in the description. He was eating a sandwich hungrily. He had eaten nothing since morning. He had been too excited to eat. He finished a sandwich and taking a flask of whiskey from his pocket, he took a short draught. Then he returned the flask to his pocket. He paused for a moment, considering whether he should risk a smoke. It was dangerous. The flash might be seen in the darkness and there were enemies watching. He decided to take the risk. Okay, so in my video, I have explained you that there were two people who were waging civil wars against each other. Who were they? The Republicans and the Free Starters. So these two people were waging civil wars against each other. So a sniper was hiding himself in the rooftop. So this member, that is a sniper, was a member of the Republican. He was hiding himself in the rooftop near the O'Connell Bridge. So he was hiding there since morning and had not eaten anything. So it's at night that these things are happening. How do you know it's night? Because the first sentence itself. What's the first sentence? The long June twilight faded into night. So the first sentence and even the second sentence that is Dublin lay enveloped in darkness. And even the words like dark waters of Liffey reveal that it's night. And almost the next day is approaching. That's almost midnight is over. So these things that's happening, it happens at night so since morning he had not eaten and now that it's night he really feels very hungry so he eats a sandwich that he has with himself so after having the sandwich he takes a sip of whiskey from his flask so flask is not the big container in which we keep the hot things it's the small container in which the whiskey is kept okay so he takes a, a sip from his whiskey bottle and then replaces it. So he has taken the whiskey bottle from his pocket and then replaces it into his pocket. From this attitude of the sniper, what do you understand? The sniper is a well-organized and disciplined person. Isn't he a well-organized and disciplined person? Yes. Why? He has to be well-organized and disciplined person because he is watched by his enemies every now and then. So he does not have the privilege of being undisciplined and unorganized because for every mistake that he creates has to be compensated with his life. So then the sniper poses for a moment and he thinks whether he should risk a smoke. Why is taking a smoke a risk for him? Because he knows that it is night and even the lightest of the spark of the match can alarm the enemy so he thinks whether he should take a risk so we already know that it's dark and the smallest or the slightest of the spark of light will alarm the enemy just imagine yourself to be in a place which is dark and you have a small candle in your hand the people around will be able to see you isn't it but will you be able to watch the people around no even though you have the candle in your hand you won't be able to see the others will be able to see because it is dark so similarly, this person is in the dark place and if he lights the match, everyone will see him. Especially his enemies will watch him since they are having a keen attention and they are watching keenly. So he knows that it's a risk. So he is ready to take the risk just for the sake of a cigarette. So I said just for the sake of a cigarette and you might also feel it like just for a puff of cigarette he is risking his life. But for the sniper it's not just a puff of cigarette. For him it's an utter need that he is in need. He's utterly in need of a cigarette. So at this moment maybe his tension or maybe whatever it is he has a justification for his attitude or his selection of the risk. But we don't know he is having an he's having a justification so it's his justification for the cigarette that he is ready to take the risk and now let's see what happens placing a cigarette between his lips he struck a match inhaled the smoke hurriedly and put out a light almost immediately a bullet flattened itself against the parapet of the roof the sniper took another whiff and put out the cigarette then he swore softly and crawled towards the left so then what happens is he takes a cigarette and puts it between his lips and then lights the match. And immediately after lighting the match, he lights a cigarette and puts a match off, puts it off. So almost immediately what happens is the enemies attack him because they were having keen attention. They were attentively watching the sniper and then they start firing. So there are many enemies on the opposite side and they start to fire. Okay. 
so then he what he does is he crawls towards the left what is crawling so crawling is a forward movement with the help of your hands and knees so you have often seen small kids who cannot walk crawling on the ground isn't it so he to crawl himself towards the left crawling also means keeping your body close to the ground and moving forward okay so he does that and moves towards the left because he feels left is more safe cautiously he raised himself and peered over the parapet there was a flash and a bullet whizzed over his head he dropped immediately he had seen the flash it came from the opposite direction so so it came from the opposite side of the street what happens is he just peered what is peer to look okay so he looked just above the parapet and what he saw was a flash a bullet whizzed through his above the head sniper is very alert he keeps himself cautious and then peeps over the parapet and he watches what's happening around he finds the enemy on the opposite side of the street they start to fire the bullet and then he just bends oh, down so that he escapes from the bullet okay so i hope you have understood so shall we move into the next paragraph he rolled over the roof to a chimney stack in the rear and slowly drew himself up behind it until his eyes were level up with the top of the parapet there was nothing to be seen just a dim outline of the opposite house top against the blue sky his enemy was under cover so he just rolled himself towards the side of the roof and then there was a chimney stack you know what's a chimney is isn't it so he just hid himself and then he was watching his enemy so on the opposite side his enemy was also hiding he could not see them only he could see the house top that was touching the sky and not the enemies okay so just then an armored car came across the bridge and advanced slowly up the street it stopped on the opposite side of the street 50 yards ahead the sniper could hear the dull panting of the motor his heart beat faster it was an enemy car he wanted to fire but he knew it was useless his bullet would never pierce the steel that covered the great monster okay so then an armored car so an a car came and then it came across the bridge and then it stopped across the street where the enemies were hiding so it was an enemy car so after stopping something happens that is it was about 50 yards far so this car stops and then it could he, he could hear the dull panting of the motor dull panting means the car is slowly stopping okay so he could hear the sound of the car stopping and then his heart starts to beat faster why because he knows that he is aware that his enemies are more in number than him because he is only one in number now we have seen that only one person is there on the rooftop and his enemies number is increasing so his heart starts to beat faster okay he knew it is he knew it was useless to fire on the car because the enemy inside the car is not going to be wounded it's not going to be hurt with the bullet that he fires because he is sitting inside the car and the car is made of steel so he knows that his bullet is not going to pierce through the steel car so he says the car is gray monster it's an exaggerated word so he says it's a gray monster because it tells the intensity of what he feels about the car okay then around the corner of a side came an old woman her head covered with a tattered shawl she began to talk to the man in the turret of the car she was pointing to the roof where the sniper lay uh, an informer okay so then when the car stopped somebody comes forward who is that an old woman she is having a tattered shawl what is a tattered tattered means old torn shawl that is it shows poor condition okay so this woman came with a tattered shawl on her head and she comes and talks to the person in the car the person was sitting in the turret what is the turret the middle portion in the car so he was sitting there and this woman came and told something to the person in the car and she is pointing towards the sniper so she is pointing towards the roof where the sniper was lying so she is an informer she is an informer in a turret shot so at least in movies and all you might have seen that the people who work as informers they will not be well dressed they will be using all those dirty torn clothes and they'll be lying on the floor or somewhere and they'll be watching things keenly so she too was in a tattered shawl and she came and informed everything about the sniper who was hiding in the rooftop the turret opened a man's head and shoulder appeared 
Looking towards the sniper, the sniper raised his rifle and fired. The head fell heavily on the turret wall. The woman darted towards the side street. The sniper fired again. The woman whirled around and fell with a shriek into the gutter. Okay, so then the turret opened. That is the middle portion of the car opened. And then there was the head and the shoulder which was visible to the sniper. So he fired. So he immediately took his rifle and fired. What happened is the head fell. And the sniper fired again. The fire the sound of this fire alarmed the woman also. She just darted. What is darted? Moved quickly. So she just moved quickly towards the side of the street. And then once again when this uh, sniper hit the, or he fired the gun, what happens is this woman, she fell to the gutter with a shriek sound. What is this shriek? Shriek is a loud and high pitched sound which you make in pain or as an expression of pain. Suddenly from the opposite roof a shot rang out and the sniper dropped the rifle with a curse. The rifle clattered to the roof. The, the sniper thought the noise would wake the dead. He stooped to pick the rifle up. He couldn't lift it. His forearm was dead. I am hit, he muttered. Okay, so now what happens is the sniper has fired the person who was in the car 50 yards ahead and also the woman. So immediately after this, the people or the person who was on the opposite side, his enemy, that is the sniper's enemy who was on the opposite side, started firing the sniper. So now he uh, fired and the rifle in his hand fell, fell to the ground. So it fell with a clattered sound. What is clatter? It is a heavy or the high sound, high pitch sound that is made when heavy objects fall to the ground. So the sound of the rifle, that is the sound of the rifle when it fell to the ground was so heavy, so noisy that he says that it is able to even awake the dead. So that was so loud and tense that it was really able to wake the dead. You know the dead people won't awake, isn't it? So they are not going to wake even with any sound. Even if you make a loud noise, even if you cry, even any sound, they, they are not going to be awake. But he says that the sound of the rifle which fell to the ground was so loud that it was able to awake the dead. So it means that the sound of the rifle falling was so loud enough. Okay. So I hope you understood that. Then after that, what happens is he got a shot in his arm and he was stooping. What is stooping? So he stooped means he's bending his head and shoulders to the ground to pick up the rifle. But he's not able to pick it up. Why? Because he has got a bullet into his arm. So he is not able to pick up the rifle. And he mutters. What is mutter? Say in a low sound. I am hit. He says he's hit. Flat onto the roof, he crawled back to the parapet. With his left hand, he felt the injured right forearm. The blood was oozing through the sleeve of his coat. There was no pain, just a deadened sensation, as if the arm had been cut off. So the sniper feels that his arm had been cut off. So he's not having the pain. So he just falls to the ground and then tries to hide himself behind the parapet so when he hides himself behind the parapet the enemies on the opposite side won't be able to see him so he just hides himself and makes himself safe and after that he's trying to sense his hand he's trying to sense the right arm with the help of his left arm so he's just trying to sense but he's not feeling the sensation he's not having he's not having the sensation of his right arm so he feels that his right arm has been cut off okay so I hope you have understood till this much. To see what happens next to the sniper, please do watch my next video. Thanks for watching.